Welcome to the program. People are back into culture and entertainment activities after a long break of which was imposed by Corona. Surya is back into her mood of exhibiting her work as well. In the time of Corona, she was at home and she has painted and uh, has been uh, doing lots of drawings during this time. Today, she's going to explain us what she, what her plans are for the near future, what kind of work she is now going to exhibit and where, and what she has produced in the time of Corona. Welcome to the program, Sreya, again. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Sreya, last year was still a lot of restrictive year for many of us. And for an artist also, it was time to stay at home and produce some work. So what you had been doing at this time? Uh, so d- during COVID, um, because before COVID, I used to go out a lot and I used to paint outside. Um, during COVID, my style changed completely. It became more introverted and more reflective and more kind of, um, you can say, um, the work was produced in a studio, which was opposite to before, where it was always yeah. produced outdoors. And this was a great shift for me because before the work was more about capturing the essence of a landscape. And now suddenly it became so much more about drawing and about perfectionism. And, uh, you know, so COVID lasted two years. And in the middle of that course, at some point towards the end of the second year, there was a a workshop in Lahore at the National College of Arts and fresco painting. I went for this workshop. It was uh, a wonderful, very intensive, but short workshop. But what's very interesting is that it, it really opened up a lot of ideas for me. And after that, I got more involved with traditional arts, which is the opposite of what's happening now, because art now is becoming very digitized and it's being produced uh, by softwares and for screens. And suddenly I became more interested with pigments and paper and and different kinds of um, paper making techniques, as well as making your own brushes. And and, uh, so I produced some of the most complex and uh, intricate and detailed drawings that I've ever worked on. Uh, they're simplified in a way, but they're also very, very detailed in, in terms of just the time and effort that went into them. So I would like to share these with you. And these somehow blur the line between fresco painting and miniature, because they also have hints of um, Persian miniature and manuscript uh, in them, influences. So the first drawing that I would like to show is this one. I don't know how clearly you can see, but it is an extremely yeah, yeah, detailed drawing. Yeah, yeah. So much that has gone into it. And there, there's so much perfection of the hand that came as a result of just being um, in my studio and practicing drawing. And because there was no distraction outside and I couldn't go outside. And for the first one and a half years, the UAE government was very strict about you know mm-hmm. safety for everybody. So that's really when I started practicing drawing in a way like never before with a kind of intense concentration. And uh, therefore, for me, perfectionism, perfectionism, craft, skill just came naturally and the drawings became increasingly detailed and intricate. And Mm -hmm. uh, it sort of brought on like like almost like a frenzy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And that's another one produced. And uh, people who see this, um, it hasn't been released in the market, uh, but these are uh, drawings that are leading to inspiration for paintings. And people who see them can't can't actually believe that this kind of detailing is handmade. And they they ask me what I used and how I did it. And it's very, very simply a marker drawing on paper, um, all handmade. And uh, then slowly I I started to um, work and, and develop these further. There's another one of my drawings that I would like to show, but it's in five collection. I think it's with Professor Salima Hashmi. I will be sharing an image of that later. And uh, there we have another one where it became increasingly easy for me to go large, small, work in repetition of pattern, study study geometry in Islam, in Islamic arts, and uh, and create the hint of frame as well. a bit sort of like miniature style, but again, I, colors, I didn't also, in. colors are also very uh, unique, like uh, turquoise and blue. Yes, I, I love blues actually. It's what kind beautiful. of colors you are using uh, in these paintings? Can you explain a little bit about the 
kind of colors that you're using? Sure. So for instance, something like this, this is um, very special. This is actually what we call pigment. I work with pure pigment. So not necessarily blocks of paint that you can get from an art shop, but these are actually blocks. They look like it's like a small block or a small rock. And you, you grind it, you crush it, and you mix it with a solvent. Uh, you can mix it with poppy oil or, or different kind of mediums. You can mix it with water, depending on the effect you want. If you mix with water, it's more translucent and more transparent. If you mix it with oil, uh, it gets much richer. Uh, different types of pigments. The one that I used was a kind of very special blue. It looked like topaz, but um, I don't think it was exactly topaz. I think it was a kind of, um, it's, a, it's a shade of blue, but it, it, I think it, it was a hint, like a richer shade of blue, much richer. And uh, it, it's um, completely handmade. And the process of grinding, mixing and crushing was very manual and very uh, uh, sort of, um, you can say intense and also very physical. And it's something that a lot of labor and effort goes into. And it's uh, maybe something that a lot of artists now, um, especially the conceptual artists don't really work with. And, and I think in a lot of contemporary art, um, now this kind of knowledge is, is lost, but I really enjoyed working in traditional arts in this way that um, you have a, a real understanding of the materials and the pigments. And uh, that's how you understand how to master it. Where do you get these paints from? So I bought mine. Uh, I bought mine in Lahore uh, from Anarkali. It's and and just opposite the National College of Art. You have these small small shops, um, very cute little small shops, bazaars where they have, you know, these karigars from Multan and and Sialkot and Gujarabana. And same goes with if you go to um, different parts of Interior Sindh where they have parts of you know natural pigment and so on. So Pakistan is one of the few countries in the world where they still have these um, natural pigments and binders that you can work with. So if you enjoy traditional arts, it's, it's a very interesting country to go and study in. Um, it, you can access it in, in some of the art shops, but you have to request them, of course. Um, it, it's not something that, um, that they have abundance of, but you can tell them that you want, a, you want to buy pigment or you want um, a squirrel hairbrush. Uh, these are things that are, are handmade there. Yeah, so very special kind of material, yeah? Yes. Okay. And then this was one of the first ones where, you know, if you look at it, it's flowers, but it can also be, it can be so many things. It can be flowers, petals, stars, constellation, cosmos. That, that's the beauty of art is that it uh, intersects and it, it blurs lines and it can be whatever you want it to be. So these are some of my new uh, drawings. I actually call them drawings, they're full on paintings, um, but uh, they're incredibly detailed. And this is the inspiration for my new series. And the new series will be launched this November in Pakistan and in UAE. So they are all markers or uh, pencil? The colored ones are gouache on paper, handmade paper. So this is a very special kind of handmade acid-free paper. So there's no chance of it catching bacteria or going off even 50 years from now or longer. Um, but the drawings which are um, of trees, which kind of remind a friend of mine who's actually from here, uh, but Persian, said, said it reminds her a lot of uh, Persian art in a way, mm -hmm. like Persian heritage and so on. Uh, this is simply a marker drawing that I did um, on, on paper. And I just kept going without stop. Yeah. And what else you had been painting like uh, in COVID times? You told me that there are more paintings that you will be displaying. Can you explain a little bit about them also? Oh, yes. So there's a completely new series that I've been working on during COVID, which will be launched at my solo exhibition. And there are things that I haven't painted before, or at least I haven't launched before. Mm -hmm. So it will be a little new for people who will come see the work. Um, there will be a mix of birds, butterflies, uh, different forms of nature, and um, really some very fascinating paintings. And also, even though they're painted, the, the drawing isn't lost in them because I had so many hours of studio practice during COVID, two years. It's almost like doing a, a master's degree in studio painting, um, like doing an MFA in studio art. So because of that, um, you will see a very strong um, 
drawing uh, underlining uh, between in all the works it's very obvious that these were uh, drawn and um, thought about and um, it, in a way a, a bit of a shift and departure from my earlier work which was more about uh, the feeling this is more about um the 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 skill and the craft and the perfectionism that comes with having a command over your medium oh great and uh, where are you planning to hold your exhibitions now in dubai or in pakistan i haven't shown in pakistan since a little before covid i would say the last solo i had was in 2000 and um 18 i think it was it was a, it completely sold out it was a huge success uh, it was called inscape and um, that was in lahore before that i i showed i think the year before that i showed in karachi but i haven't been showing back in my uh, country so we lost two years um to covid but now i'm hoping to show in november as well as to bring bring that exhibition here because i haven't had a solo here either so the shows i've been showing here are group shows and the curators and people i work with have requested me to put a collection together so the exhibition dates uh, the venue the uh, final list the curators and the gallery will all be announced on my website uh, right now we're keeping a bit of a suspense because there's a a team working with me and uh, so we're trying to keep a bit of a sus suspense and surprise element going but I, i'm sure when it's announced people will be very happy with the choices okay that's great so wish you good luck with all your work and all your effort and please keep us informed about your new work when it's when it's going to be displayed and uh, when there'll be an exhibition so that we can share with our viewers and people who are interested to go to see it in either in Karachi Lahore or in Dubai they would be able to see your work and uh, Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me over.